Our first lizard here is a Great Basin Whiptail Lizard, Aspidocellus tigris. These lizards are mostly carnivores and eat insects, spiders, scorpions, beetles, and other little critters. They are found from southwestern United States to northern Mexico. He has a long slender body, small grainy scales on his back, large rectangular scales on its belly, his upper side often has light stripes, and his throat can be pinkish or even orange as adults. These guys grow about four inches long from mouth to vent, then topped off with an eight inch long tail, which is how he gets his name, Whiptail. Our second guy here is a common chuckwalla, Soramalus adder. He's actually an iguana and mostly only eats vegetation. You can find them in both Mojave and Sonoran deserts. He's recognized by his large, flat, rounded belly and wide, blunt tipped tail. During mating season, we see different colors and lots of aggressive territorial and courtship rituals like push-ups and gaping mouths. Now these guys are most active at temperatures above 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and they typically live for about 15 years in the wild. Our third guy here is a Western zebra-tailed lizard, Calosaurus draconoides. Now he's native to Southwestern United States and Northwestern Mexico. They are omnivores and mostly eat insects, moths, ants, and spiders but occasionally they dine on spring buds and flowers. They can usually be found in hard packed soils, scattered vegetation, and scattered rocks, typically flats, washes, and trails like we have up here in Joshua Tree National Park. Now they are typically light brown or even almost a white in color. These guys grow about four inches from head to vent with about a three to four inch tail. And the tail has white and black stripes and that's how he gets his name zebra-tailed lizard. This is our Mojave fringe-toed lizard, Uma scoparia. He's mostly found in the sandy deserts and sand dunes of California, Arizona, and Baja California. He's especially common out in Kelso Dunes of the Mojave Desert. These guys primarily eat insects, but sometimes eat some flowers and leaves. They're typically a light brown color in order to blend in with the sand. They also have elongated scales or fringes on their hind toes, which helps them run through the sand without sinking in, hence their name, Mojave Fringe-Toed Lizard. They are famous for burying themselves in the sand, and they actually are known to swim through the sand. This guy here is known as a desert iguana, Dipsosaurus dorsalis. Like all desert iguanas, he is primarily an herbivore and eats buds, fruits, and leaves, especially the yellow flowers from the creosote bushes. Sometimes they may even eat ants. He is very common in both Mojave and Sonoran deserts. You can find them a lot at Kelso Dunes and Joshua Tree National Park, even on some of the California coastal islands. He gets a species named Dorsalis from the Latin word meaning spike in reference to a row of enlarged spike scales running along the middle of his back. They grow about 16 to 24 inches long, including the tail, He's hard to photograph or videotape since he's always seems to be running around. Now this is our Great Basin Fence Lizard, Scaloparis occidentalis longitis. Now he's a subspecies of the Western Fence Lizard and only found in the far western parts of North America from Malibu to Joshua Tree National Park. Now he's actually a type of iguana. They are sometimes known as little spiny lizards but come in a variety of colors from sort of rusty orange to even yellow or a pale yellow, but sometimes they have some white, a bit grayish, or even a little bit darker. This is a common side blotch lizard, Uda stansburiana. He is also a type of iguana. He lives in the dry regions of the United States and Northern Mexico. And these guys or the males are mostly notable for being polymorphic and displaying three types of morphs during mating season and the different morphs that compete in a game like rock, scissors, and paper when trying to acquire a mate. And like other lizards, these guys can lose their tails to confuse a predator, but it seems when they do so, they lose their social status among their peers, and this negatively impacts their chances of survival and even reproduction. This is a collared lizard, Crotophytus cholerus. 
He gets his name collared from the distinct colored bands of black around his neck and shoulders. And during mating season, the males can get very colorful with blue-green bodies, yellow stripes on their tail and backs, yellow-orange throats, and this one here might be a female, but it's always hard to tell. Also, they run along upright on their hind legs, like the velociraptors from Jurassic Park. And this is a desert snake. I'm really not sure who he is, but I think it's a type of gopher snake. But it might be a red racer, but it looks like he likes to sleek around from burrow to burrow, looking for little rats, mice, and other critters. And finally, this is our desert tortoise, Gopherus agassizii. He's a native to both Mojave and Sonoran deserts. He spends most of his time living underground in burrows, so he's really hard to find. They typically get around 14 inches long. The males are slightly larger than females. His front limbs have sharp, claw-like scales for digging, and his hind limbs are a lot skinnier and very long. And these guys, they live from about 50 to 80 years old. And our Mojave Desert tortoise is a protected species as their populations have declined as much as 90% since the 1980s. And one of the biggest threats to them are the desert wind and solar energy farms. So if you stumble across one, please give it a little respect and try not to bother him too much.